when you use the same template, you want to just make sure in your directions that nothing has changed from the other things that you set up. And it looks like we set up uh, our hidden and center line to be at 0.6, I'm sorry, 0.3 millimeters, because that is what the ASME standard says, not default. So why set this when we're not setting these? Um, so it looks like everything is the same. And this is a tool slide project 4.7. And that will be the next one in your book. If we went to Blackboard and we back up one, go down here to the tool slide, it tells you exactly where it is, page 238. And it tells you to download the Imperial prototype again, and we've created a template. So this one is made of cast iron and it has this, look at this, this goes straight up and down and it's a little bit hard to see that that's correct. So you always want to ask if you ever have questions about something, this goes straight up and down and this side goes at an angle to tangent. So how do I know where to put this circle? Well, if this is a radius of 1.09, then the center of this arc is 1.09 from the right hand side and point 1.3 up uh, 1.38 up from the top of the plate because the radius is from the center to the ten uh, the quadrant right so it's just offset 1.09 offset 1.38 and that would be the center now i'm going to show you how to draw this um, we notice that we have a slot in the middle and from the center of this hole, offset 1.25, that makes it centered around the center of the hole here. We have two holes at a diameter 0.875. And one thing that is erroneous about this input sheet is this should have a 2x on the 1 and a 2x on the 1.5, meaning that that comes from the other side 1 inch as well and 1.5 from the front as well. Thickness of the plate is 0.88. And then we have some chamfers. Now, sometimes we see 2x.25 times 45 degrees. That's a normal way to say what a chamfer is because it's 45 degrees either from the vertical or the horizontal. And this is the length of that 45 degree angle start. Another thing to look at is this protrusion is 2.25. And this is 2, so if I add those two together, it's 4.25, and this is 6.25, so this is also 2. So this thing is centered. So that might help us understand our next exercise. I'm going to go ahead and start with opening, or Control-O. I can open my inch imperial prototype right there. Got all my layers, got everything set up, and I'm going to immediately file Save As because I want to keep that pristine, and I'm going to save it as Tool Slide. Now that I see that it's Tool Slide here and at the top of the tab, I'm going to go down here and fill in all this stuff. This is two points each for every one of these, except for materials, five points off if you forget these. So I try and just go ahead and knock these out. Tool slide. The date. Control A is 10, 6, 21. Sheet one of one, because we'll just have one sheet in here. Then the material is in paper space. So this is all done. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to, I'm sorry, it's in model space. I'm going to go to model, double click on material, and put two spaces after the colon there. And this is cast iron. And I'm going to save that. All right, so this side view right here, this plane, this plate right here is what they're calling a primary view. And the reason that we're, we're telling you what the primary top and right views are 
is because the check prints are set that way. And if you don't have them set up that way, it can be confusing checking your work because you will have a chance to check your work and look at a finished document to check it. All right, I'm going to go to my home tab and I'm going to set my visible layer active. I'm going to draw this slab on the bottom that's 0.88 tall and 6.25 wide with a rectangle. I'm going to make sure that this snaps on here this time. 6.25 in the X, in the positive direction, comma, and also positive up from there, 0.88. Enter. Now, if you want to, we can put these chamfers on next. So we can just go ahead and finish that out. So a chamfer is the same as a fillet. It just makes an angled edge. The alias for chamfer is CHA. Enter. Now, notice that it has no distance on distance one, distance two. Otherwise, uh, or in other words, it's just going to make a corner. So if I have two distances, like 0.25 by 0.25 or 0.25 by 1, it could be two different distances I put in distance. But I'm going to use an angle. So I could type A or click on this button. It says, what is the length of the first line? Now, if you had two different lengths, you want to really pay attention to what distance you put down first. You have to select that line first. So it's 0.25 in either direction at 45 degrees. Enter. And the angle is 45. Enter. Now I have multiple of these. I have one on each side. So I just like fillets, I can type M, enter, and select the two sides here and the two sides here. And now my chamfers are finished. In order to draw this, um, here we know that this is two inches offset. This is 2.25. That leaves two inches on the other side. So I could just draw a line straight up and then get my width on that. So what could I do? How, what is the height? So if I have a radius of 1.38 from the top of this plate and then the distance of 1.38 from the top to this circle. And then from that circle, the radius to the top of this is 1.09. So I could add those two. I could also draw two lines. Because I'm not going to leave this line in the middle. So I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint with ortho on F8. What happened? All right, so F, F8 makes that ortho. Something's happening when I do that. Push that up, and I could go 1.38. I don't have to add this. Enter, and then go up from that a radius of 1.09 because it's half the diameter comes from the center of the hole. The center of the hole is at 1.08. I go 1.09 further. I don't have to add that. And AutoCAD has not gotten on the game yet to, um, to adding in the length of a line. So if you wanted these two to be the one line, there is a join command. And if I type J for join, I can select these two. They have to be in the same trajectory and hit enter. And now I have one line. And there's no, really no reason to do that because I'm going to delete this in a second. Now, if the center, so this is the height of that center protrusion. The width is 2.25. So if I could just type that in, 2.25 divided by 2, I could offset each way. Or I can just say offset. That would be 1.125 each side. And that will give me my 2.25 dimension. And since I'm 
I'm just going to dimension this just to make sure. And then just hit escape. Don't set it down. You don't need that. So now I'm going to delete this middle line and just draw a line straight across. Now, is this going to be the true height of my part? Anytime you cut the top of an arced part out, it's going to shorten it. See, I have this notch right here, and it shortens it. So we're going to find out by how much by drawing this right-hand view. So I'm going to draw this bottom piece. I'm going to come to the left. And let's go ahead and, and highlight over here what we've got. We've got our 6.25.88. We've got our chamfers. We've got our 2.25 for that. And we're going to we're going to put these, use these dimensions again for this portion. So, and I've got this two inch because I got that located on the center, right? So over here, I'm going to go a negative from this point. In the X, I'm going a negative direction, a negative three. That's the depth of the part. Negative three, comma. And then the height of that plate is 0.88 in the positive direction. So now I need to draw the line for this chamfer. Now I'm going to just track from this one. I could also offset that top line down 0.25 because it's a 45 degree chamfer and it's 0.25 in the X, 0.25 in the Y. And now I'm going to draw a line. Now, you see this 1.38 right there? I've got this drawn. This 1.38 right there is also the length of that line right there. So I'm going to draw a line from this point up. 1.38 from the top of the part. Now that is where that arc starts. And I'm going to draw a circle with a radius of 1.09 just anywhere, and I'm going to move it from its eastern quadrant to the end point of that line right there. So C is a circle with a radius. Click anywhere. The radius is 1.09. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say move because when I grab this and drag it out, it stretches it. You can only move a circle from the center and I don't want to move it from the center. I'm just going to move it from this quadrant. So if I say M for move, it asks me for a base point that needs to connect to this end point that would be my eastern quadrant and then move it to that end point. Now I have something to make the circle from, the other hole. I'm going to draw a line here from the top of this, and we're going to let this go past the quadrant. So I'm going to take ortho off. You see how that would make a bump? So we're going to go up to tangent to smooth it out. I'm going to trim this. And now we've got that outside shape. Now I'm going to draw a circle with the diameter. So we've got a radius of 1.09. We have a diameter of 1.25. So hover over this arc. I want a circle diameter. Hover over the arc and it gives me the center. The diameter is 1.25. And now I've got this one done. Now I want to draw a line straight up from the center of this on up. I'm going to offset it 1.25 to the right, like this. So I'm going to draw this line, offset it to the right, 1.25, and offset it to the left, also 1.25. So that's equidistant both ways, right? So I'm going to draw a line from the center. Just draw it with ortho on, F8. Draw it long, doesn't matter. Because over here, it's going to be a different distance in here than the apex of this circle. So now I'm just going to say offset 0.125 each direction will give me 0.25 overall. From the center over each side, 1.25. I'm going to delete this middle one and now I'm going to use trim 
And I'm going to hold down, hold down my mouse and then just drag it right through there and drag over these. I kind of like that little thing. So if I wanted to put a dimension in here and just check it. You can do this all day long and just check things and make sure it's okay. As long as your units are set, um, you'll get feet and inches or decimal units. All right, we can't see the holes here. We can't see the cuts here. Let me see if this height is going to be the same. If I draw a line from here, that is the top of my part, right? Mm. You see that? It did take off that much in height. How much is that? Now, if I drag this out, be in the Y direction, I have to push it like that. Seven thousand said it took off. 0 0.007 inches. So I'm going to delete that. So if I won't really want to make this correct, I'm going to trim all this or I could stretch this down. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to use the trim command and trim this and this. Sometimes you can't draw this view. I mean, you better be thinking about that if you drew this view to be that height. Now, can I just come down from here one point, whatever the... 1.09. No, I have to project from here to get my hidden lines, my center line, because the top of this circle is cut out. I'm going to go ahead and draw this plate from the top, making sure I start in that corner this time. This is 6.25 in the X comma, and then negative 3. And there's my plate. See, that's the same length. Now, from the top, this just has two straight edges. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to project geometry from here. Enter to repeat the last command, or I could offset this 2.25 if you want to. I'm also going to draw a line. Now, I drew this as a rectangle, and I haven't exploded it. I could offset this line over 0.25 and this line over 0.25, or I can project this geometry up and draw these lines. We will see these edges. All right. So is this notch right here visible? Yeah, it is from the top, right? But it's not in the center of a part. So I'm going to use my object snap tracking. I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit so that you can see this better. I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to start from down here this time. But the first thing I have to do is shift right click, temporary track point. And I'm going to hover over this point, drag it up, left click to turn. Left click to start, left click to stop. Now I can just offset that line, the full distance or width of that slot. So I can say offset 0.25. And knowing that I started from the right, if I projected this one up and over, it would be below it. So I need to project this one down or offset it down. Now, am I going to see the edge underneath there? Yes, I'm going to see the bottom edge of this hole. All right. The other thing that I need to draw right here is I need these two holes. They're right in the middle, but offset one inch. One inch in. So here's the deal. This is three inches. And that's one and a half. So that would be at the midpoint of a line. If I offset a line from the outside in one inch, that would just be at the midpoint, right? And then I can mirror that over if I want to. So I'm going to explode this outside rectangle X. 
and I'm going to offset one inch. So I'm going to offset from the outside over. And I'm going to mirror this in a minute. So just offset that. And right in the midpoint of that line is a circle with a diameter of 0.875. So if I put this in and I hover over that midpoint, that's one and a half because that's three. So you can draw it this way, but the dimensions still have to come in in the drawing. The diameter of this is 0.875. Now I don't need this anymore. And if it's equidistant both from both sides, I'm going to mirror it. So MI is mirror. I'm going to select this object. And it wants me to draw a mirror line. So I'm going to go to the midpoint of the overall part. Down here to the midpoint. Do I want to erase the first one? No. Hit enter. And now I'm finished with that. So these are the visible lines of the tool slide.